the best mastering engineers are typically the ones that might have had experience in the era of cutting lacquers or, or, or cutting for vinyl. Because there were physical limitations of the vinyl, I mean, you're working with, you know, let's say in the case of a 12 inch LP, you have a finite amount of space to cut. And then you eventually, then you've got a big label in the middle of the record. So you had to kind of get it to fit. It was really just making sure the balances of, of not having too much bass on the bottom, because bass, given the, uh, the wavelength size, tends to create bigger grooves, wider grooves, greater excursions. And the top end would be very hard to reproduce if you had too much top end. It would come across sounding distorted, hard to play back cleanly. And I think because of the physical limitation of that medium, you had to sort of pretty much to a, to a great degree follow some standards and some rules. And the best guys knew how to break the rules without having playback reproduction issues when you you know you go to put the needle in the in the vinyl and doesn't skate across or jump out of the groove. So that's that's traditionally been the the exercise of mastering. Whether it's the prevailing source medium right now it tends to be you know uh, MP3s and AACs and master for iTunes because it's it's an internet world, it's a digital world, and everyone's just sort of sending stuff everywhere. But uh, when I got here in the late '90s, it was there was a lot more uh, in terms of formats that we used to master to. I mean, I could be doing cassette transfers, DAT, which is digital audio tape. Umatic video tape machines, CD. We were we were cutting uh, lacquers for vinyl back in those days. Acquired uh, some professional know-how and was purpose-built for a reason. So it tended to be very very expensive, complicated to use, and required an engineer to operate it in most cases. So they still take that listening paradigm, that listening experience, and they port it over. Even though we're all digital now. They take those ears and, the, and that, that taste perspective and they're, they're, they're bringing that over to the digital world. I really feel like the best guys were able to faithfully make a transfer of a mix, get it nice and loud, and then when you, you, know, you buy the vinyl, you put it on, you're just, you're just listening to music. You weren't thinking about technical things, how great the mix was, how great the mastering was. You were just really listening to the music for the music's sake.